Okay, so as I've let you know earlier, I will be in this video presenting you with a framework that will allow you to seamlessly uh, generate um, 11 different AI agents that you can just simply spin off in your Claude code build in order to build an entire team. And then I will show you how to trigger them and invoke them uh, successfully so that you can actually utilize them, right? Now, the environment that we're going to be working in requires a bit of a setup. So uh, you can already see me right in the middle of the project. It's a busy screen, so it might may look a little bit intimidating. So before we move on, I will take a brief step back and b basically list what are we doing here in a second. So the first requirement, obviously, as I've shown you, is that you have cursor, right? And that you've used it in the past. If you haven't, if you just came in and watching this video and you're like, man, I, I just want to have this set up for me, tough luck. You're going to have to go and download cursor, find a tutorial on that because it's very easy to find a bunch of them and just spin off your cursor version. Then obviously in cursor, importing projects and, and all of those things as well. Same thing. That is something that you will need to be able to set up on your own, right? I have uh, recorded a video on how to install Claude code on a Windows machine specifically, right? And there's, there's a tutorial right here, like, and that explains in 10 steps now takes way less uh, because you no longer need Ubuntu um, to run it on a Windows machine. It should be as easy as, again, you know, just uh, running a quick uh, prompt to install it. And there it is. Right? Just running this command should be sufficient for any type of a machine, right? And then from there, today, we're going to be talking about a new feature that they introduced, which is the introduction of these sub-agents. So I'll go back into cursor and we can move on from there. The best way to illustrate how agents work and why agents are uh, good to have is through a problem or through a, through a situation that's realistic. So I'm building this project for work right now. I'm trying to optimize this uh, old project of mine for some research that I'm doing for Citizenshipper. And in that process, I've identified a lot of bugs here in the front end, but they could be be going beyond the front end side of things, right? So when you spin off Claude code, it just has a general engineer, right? Somebody who just knows a little bit of everything, but is not specialized in any particular part of the app building process. So what I'm doing with spinning off these 11 agents is building agents that are specifically tailored to a particular role. Think of it as having a engineering team, like every person in that team specializes in something, right? So as you can see, this is my workflow here, right? I've discovered a problem and you're still in charge, right? There's, that is the first rule of thumb. You're still the one calling the shots, right? So I've, I've identified the problems. I screenshotted them, right? There's a lot, lot of problems here, like 108% here. Instead of 194, we processed 210 uh, API calls and that never got synced with the most recent searches, right? So I've listed all of those problems, right? But I did not ask Cursor to solve them. No, I've used the, their latest model, the Opus Max, to read the code base and read my screenshot and generate a document instead, right? with a full-on fix plan that I would then provide my agents with. Like, as you can see, there's a lot of details here on how this should be fixed and how this should be done, but I don't want Cursor to do it. I want my sub-agents to do it because they're perfected in solving a particular problem. So the first step that I do is I've built this stock, right? So the first step that I would do is I would say dog, fix plan number one, for example, I want to commit this to my code base so that I can ask Claude code to read it. So the first step, create a specs doc with the issue, 
commit to the code base, sync the changes so that it goes to the main branch, right? And this is how you make that part of, of the live code. The next step is spinning off cloud code. Once it's, it's installed, depending on the version you've installed for it, um, all you would need to do is uh, open another terminal window and then mine is uh, installed in as Ubuntu. So I'm just spinning off Ubuntu version and then spinning up Claude itself, right? Um, if you just had Claude installed on your machine directly, all you would have to do is type Claude, right? Now, because you never configured agents, we want to talk about configuring them, not just using them. And the first step is as usual with Claude code, you use slash commands, right? So the first slash command that opens is this one to adding a new work director and the second one is agents. It's all alph alphabetical. Like if you just started typing in letters, it would give you something else. But in this case, because we need agents, we can just type agents or whatever, and it's going to give us the agent configuration. Now, in my case here, I've already built 11 of them, right? But I can show you how to create a new one. As you can see, it's fairly simple, right? All you would have to do is click create a new agent and let's and then choose what you want to do uh you can build project level agents that are going to work on your project specifics right and then you can also build a personal agent meaning an agent that's going to be able to oversee and be pulled in across multiple projects right so basically if, if you're building uh, a, a cto Maybe a CTO orchestrator can work on everything, but maybe you want to build a project specific one for this tool. And from that, for that use case, you want to select project level agents, right? I'm going to just go with the personal one here because I just want to build an agent and show you how to build a general, general agent that is uh, good for um, a particular use case. Let's say in this case, uh, we can build a QA agent, right? Usually what you want to do is you want to generate this with Claude without doing any manual configuration. And now when you reach this step where you got to describe the agent itself, that's where the magic happens. And that's where I want you to start using my custom GPT because I've built a GPT specifically configured to help you generate these agents. Okay, so as, as you know already, or you may not, I don't know. Um, I got a lot of custom GPTs built. I always build a custom GPT for repetitive tasks. So for lovable, for example, anything on the design, SEO based prompt integrations, uh, PRD generation, a bunch of them. Right. And now I've also, as I said, built this, uh, sub agent generator. So, you know, a couple of prompts, very simple ones. You can create one or my entire 11 agent stack. We're going to just work on create one agent right now and we'll let the GPT search its knowledge and just um, have it work on building the CTO agent, right? In in this case scenario, as you can see, it is very specific and it's assigning work to all the sub agents that the system is programmed to, right? This is just a test. Uh, I'm still refining this a GPT. I will give you access to all of mine, but as you can see, it follows a clear description uh very importantly it triggers on particular sets of keywords right so like you can either ask the system to use a particular agent or have it trigger if it, if you use any of the keywords in its description all you would have to do from here right is click on the copy button right here at the very top right corner and then when we go back to my uh, build over here right where we were looking to uh, implement this agent inside of, then you would um, you would just paste this. Now to paste inside Cloud Code again, if you haven't watched my videos, Control or Windows or any Command uh, and V will not work. You have to just use right click of a mouse in this field, right? And it won't write it fully, but like it will just um, it will be there, trust me. All you have to do then is select press enter. And from that point on, it just starts the implementation process. We're going to have a bit of an overlap here because I've already um, implemented a CTO, right? Um, so I, I may likely delete this one, 
uh, just so that I avoid any overlap. That will be my number one rule of thumb for you to remember is, you know, at, once this process is finished, don't build duplicated agents because you don't want them working one on top of the other, right? So again, you just so again, you will just press continue over here. You can choose the color, whatever, you know, again, let's take this one and then it will just have a confirmation to create. Now, if I press enter, it would save. I'm just going to press escape to cancel all of this, right? And then go back completely because I already have it. If you have a project level agent, it will override anything that is a global agent. It's already had a front end designer for this project. So the project one supersedes the one that, that is individual, right? So now all I have to do, right, is I could, I would go back. And if we remember, we had built this uh, document, right, uh, that was on bug fixing, right? The bug fix plan one, right? The name of this document is bug search fix plan .md. So all I have to do is go back to cloud code and ask it to read this document and then spin off a, a set of sub agents to work on it. So as, so as you can see, I've, I've said to it to please read the bulk search fix plan document and then initiate sub agents that should work on fixing the problems instead of file, starting with the CTO as the orchestrator. Like I, it's not a necessary uh, move. I like to be as specific as possible, but even if you just said, hey, just spin us uh, um, sub agents in the current structure, the way things are built, it would trigger the CTO because it knows that it sits on top of everything else, right? So all I have to do now is just let Claude Code do its thing. It's just reading the, the docs and creates a to-do list, right? And then it should start firing off and start uh, initiating agent work to get this fixed. As you can see, CTO Orchestrator was just triggered, right? To coordinate what is supposed to be done, right? And at some point you will see these agents starting to work and overlap over one another, right? When you have these bash commands, I always approve them. And now let's see how other agents are spinning off of each other. So as you can see, CTO just got done with the first step, which is, okay, I understand what was going on. I'm now going to invoke the Superbase architect because I know it, it's, it's supposed to work on the backend issues and it will fix those. Then it will focus and bring in the front end one and then likely the other ones um, as the process goes on. I'll put a pause and then I will just show you the full transcript when all of this is done. Okay, the system is still working, but as you can see already, we've been able to fix some of the stuff. The progress bar is fixed. The bulk searches stuff is fixed. Uh, disregard the design stuff because I'm, I'm working on a smaller screen just to record a demo for you. And the reason why some of this data is missing is because one thing that Cloud Code cannot do is deploy to your backend. But since it's designed it, I know that I can copy paste the SQL into um, uh, Supervase myself and then make the corrections. What I wanted to showcase today to you is this system and how it's working. Again, we had a CTO that orchestrated the work and then transferred over the work to Superbase Architect to work on the backend stuff. The front-end designer took over then and finished up and did what it needed to do to implement the fixes, and the release controller is now working to validate everything and to test, right? It, it's running into a couple of problems uh, uh, here and there, but that is quite all right. That is normal. It is a, This is a self-correcting mechanism. If you use the prompts that I've used, to build these, they are built so that they can piggyback off of each other and go back if needed in order to make sure that the implementation is done uh, appropriately, right? So this concludes the tutorial. I'll just let this process continue because it's going on and it will go on, not forever, obviously, but it's going to go on for a long time and just point you towards a resource where you will be able to find all of this as usual. I 
put everything that I know and everything that I do inside my Vibe Coder OS, the Builder Survival Kit, where you can get access to all of the links, including this particular lesson. If within Cloud Code 101, you just need to navigate to the Cloud Code 101, open it up, and then you will see the basic tutorials, which is how do you even implement Cloud Code if you've never done it, including the Super Cloud Framework, which I'm going to be talking about in future videos. But in general, just mastering a Cloud Code overall. But in this particular case scenario, you will just be focusing on the sub agents and what sub agents are. What are the requirements? I'm going to dump this demo video right here. And then here you will be able to find the actual prompts for any of the agents. All you have to do is copy these. And again, right click of the mouse in that little box in Cloud Code and just dump them in. Press enter, create and enjoy. And I'll see you in the next one.